Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I would like to share with you what I titled The First Law of Success. The First Law of Success. Now, success is a sweet word. Success is what everyone desires to have. Success is everyone's dream. No one embarks on a journey without having a dream of a successful end. You don't go into any business without having a dream of success. Particularly, all of us who are here in this Saturday of learning, our dream is to be successful. Every one of you will like that your name be mentioned as the overall best student at the end of your academic sojourn in this place. Success is good. But then there are laws that undergird success. There are laws that if you embrace them, success will be automatic. And one of such laws I'm sharing with you today is what I call the law of responsibility. And you've got to take 100% responsibility. That is the first law of success. Of course, many of us will be confused by asking ourselves what actually is success. Can I succeed in life? Let me give you first of all what I call a wisdom key that should give you an idea or a kind of a hope that Anybody on this earth can succeed. You see, life is like a combination lock. Your job is to find the right numbers in the right order so you can have anything you want. That is life. Anyone that will succeed will depend on how fast you can find the right number, put them together in the right order, then success will be your lot. But then, what is success? I believe you have so many ideas about success in your mind. And of course, you must have come across several definitions about success. But I have been working with this definition for years, and it has saved me from a lot of stress. It has saved me from getting into unnecessary rat race. It has saved me from competing with anybody. I understood that success, listen to me, is first of all, knowing your purpose in life, growing to reach your maximum potential, and sowing seeds that benefit others. That is success. And you will see from this definition that I did define success in terms of the amount of wealth you have accumulated. I've not defined success in terms of your material possession. I've not even defined success in terms of your status. How will we know that you have succeeded in life is when we discover that you have walked in the path of the purpose for which God has sent you to this heart. And if you are developing yourself to reach your maximum potential, and if you are pouring your life to benefit humanity. 
I discovered my purpose in 2005. I've given my life to Christ since 1989, September 9. But I discover the reason for which God sent me to this world. And I started developing myself to make myself relevant to my generation. And of course, I'm blessing humanity. Can I ask you before we move forward, do you know the reason why you are here? Do you know the essence of your existence on this side of eternity? Have you discovered who you are? Have you realized the potentials you carry? Do you know that somebody is actually in need of you? In 2005, God opened my eyes and said, Son, I have actually carved you out to help young people anywhere they are found all over the world to discover their purpose, to develop their leadership potentials, and to be driven by biblical integrity. Everything I've been doing since 2005 was a result of the discovery of that purpose. Can you write in one word your life purpose statement? Or are you just living, striving to make ends meet? That would be a wasted life. We will talk about that in the course of time. But then let me show you how this definition was applied by a group of people. And I give you a case study. I title to it, The Adventure of Four Lepers. And it is chronicled in the passage they just read for us. I just picked two verses. You know the story of these four lepers. They were thrown out of the city. Why? Because they were lepers. In Israel, once you became leprous, you are thrown out of the city. You will not be allowed to dwell with other people in the community. So they were thrown outside the gates. Helpless, no hope, no fortune, no future. And unfortunately for them, they couldn't enter the city. And at the other end of the city, they couldn't go there because the Aramea that besieged the city was still much alive. So they were just hanging in the middle. But a time came that these four guys said to themselves, and that is where the law of responsibility, you know, came out from. They said to one another, why stay we here till we die? Why stay we here till we die? If we go to the city, death is waiting for us. If we go to the camp of the Aramea, death is waiting for us. Let's take our lives into our hands and let's take an adventure. So they decided to go to the other side. So let us go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spear us, we will leave. If they kill us, then we die. Now, me to give you some tips from this passage, I would like you to learn a formula. Can you please bring out your pen and your note and write this formula down? I said, event plus response equals outcome. Event plus response equal outcome. E plus R equal outcome. Let me explain what I mean by that formula. There are certain events in life that you can't do anything about. They are constant. But there is your own response that is a variable that you can adjust so that you can have the outcome you desire. That is where responsibility, you know, plays. Let me give you an example. There are certain events in Bowen University you cannot change. I've talked with quite, you know, few of us that complain about water. Water is a problem that Bowen University is trying to solve, doing everything possible to solve. But many of us, we capitalize on the problem of water and say, I don't have water to bathe, so I get late to class. I don't have water to bathe, 
I cannot meet up with the service time. I, I, I don't have water to bathe. I don't have water to do this. And we lodge a lot of complaints. Another problem is light. There is no light. I couldn't finish my assignment. There is no light. I couldn't hire my clothes. There is no light. I couldn't get to the devotional hall. There is no light. These are events that we reoccur. But for you to have your own outcome of success, you must continue to adjust and reset your response. Yes, there is no water. Can't you get a reservoir, small reservoir, and get your own water when the water is available and keep it somewhere so that you can have that to take your bath and find your way to the lecture hall without giving any complaint? There is no light. You have the option of buying a rechargeable lamp and charge it when there is light. To every problem, there is a solution if success is your dream. But a lot of times, do you know that we complain a lot? The reason why I am out of school was because my parents didn't have enough money to pay my school fees. Do you know that you can volunteer at any of the cafeteria? That can I volunteer for one hour to work with you? Then we strike a deal. You can pay me social amount of money. Somebody will say, ah, that is how your parents study abroad to get money to take you to school. Professor Elorio of Blessed Memory said, when he was in the U.S., he worked in about four places at the same time, and he was still studying for his master's, and he didn't fail. That is responsibility. So what are the events that surround you that you need to make an adjustment of your own response so that you can have the outcome you desire? Look at these four guys. They knew that staying at that spot, they will die because there was no food. And they knew that if they go to the city, they will die. If they go to the camp, they will die. So death is constant. So they decided to take a response. Let's throw ourselves into the camp of the Aramean. And you know when they did, you know what happened? They go to the camp of the Aramean. Surprisingly, they didn't meet anyone there. They only met food scattered everywhere. Thank God they did. So in what way do you need to adjust your response today so that you can have the outcome you desire? Now, let me give you some fighter things that you need to keep to your heart as you leave this chapel this morning. If you want to create the life of your dreams, please note this morning that you must take 100%, not 99.9%. In other words, you are responsible for your action. You make a decision and you make up your mind to stand by your decision. That means, listen to me, you must give up all excuses, all your victim stories, all the reasons why you can't and why you haven't until now, and all the blaming of outside circumstances. When there was a problem in the Garden of Eden, oh, if, why did, I mean, Adam, why did you do this? It was the woman that you created for me. If, why did you do this? It was serpent who deceived me. Passing blame. So who are you blaming for your failure thus far? Don't blame anybody outside of yourself. Blame yourself. Can I talk to the staff of this university? What are your complaints? What are your excuses for not performing to your optimum capacity? Oh, are you saying that I have too much to work on my hands, but when it's not being fair to me, you know? That is an excuse. Please don't blame anybody. Blame yourself. You know, when I was to present my uh, pre feed seminar for my program, I got busy moving about, preaching, teaching everywhere, and my mate would be calling me, Reverend, what's happening? We have done our own. We don't see you in school. Why, when are you coming to? I say, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I'm busy the first month, I'm busy the second month, I'm busy the third month, I'm busy the fourth month. And I discover almost all my classmates have done their own. I say, what is the problem with me? There must be a problem with me. The problem is not with time. The problem is not with ability. The problem is, the problem is just me. So one day I talk to myself like these four guys. I say, today, I must put this thing together and get to school this week. And I got it done. Would you like to make up your mind this morning and say, no, I must get this thing done? Look at what George Washington said. He said, 99% of all failures 
come from people who have the habit of making excuses. 99% of all failures. In other words, an average person sitting down here today give excuses. They give excuses. What excuse have you been given for your failure? Discard them this morning. I love what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. He says, whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the cloud will not reap. Hmm. It's like it will rain this morning. I won't go to work. Get out first and see whether it will rain. Hmm. The wind is blowing. I won't be able to make it. Why not get out first and see whether the rain will break forth? Everything you think... Everything you say, everything you do, need to become intentional and align with your purpose, your values, and your goals. Let me round up this well. Even God did not give any excuse. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and darkness was upon the heart. Darkness was upon the surface of the heart. God created something good, and darkness came and overshadowed it. And the Bible says, God looked and said, what is going on? God did not back out. God did not give any excuse and blame anybody. He faced the situation, challenged it, and said, let there be light. Will you like to face the situation of your life this morning? Have you been given excuses because of your sickness, and it has resulted to fail? Will you like to address that sickness this morning? Have you been giving excuses? Our lecturers are not teaching me. Well. Would you like to go online and Google that same topic and teach yourself that is how far the lecturer can go with you? Would you like to tell yourself that I will not because my parents could not send money to me, then I will pack off from this school? No. Would you like to think of another way out? Would you like to address that situation that has led you to be giving excuses over and over, over and over? You know I'm the only female in my family. You know I'm the only male. You know I'm the firstborn. You know I'm the lastborn. You know I'm this. You know I'm that. Would you like to say, no, I take responsibility this morning? If that is what you want to do, I would like you to place back down your head and talk to God. And say, Lord, I am coming out of giving excuses this morning. I've realized where my weakness lies and I want to deal with that weakness. If you are here this morning and you will like the grace of God to come over your life so that you can come out of that seemingly dark situation, so that you can come out of that path that is taking you that you know to failure, so that you can come out of Whatever thing that has had you banned thus far, you are saying, this morning, Jesus, I am taking responsibility. I don't want to be lazy again. I don't want to complain again. I don't want to pass blame again. I want to take responsibility. I want to deal with my situation. And you will like me to pray with you. Will you like to place, while you are bowing down your head, closing your eyes, will you like to please raise up your hand so that I can pray with you? I'm waiting for you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. That is the first step. I would like you to please, by God's message, to find time to see me in my office because it goes beyond praying with you. We need to get to the root of the matter and see how we can help you move on from here. Will you like to raise up that hand very well? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I commit these ones unto you right now because you have created them with inbuilt ability to succeed in life. I am asking you, O oh God, that the grace that helped Paul. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. The grace he gave to me was not to no effect. I work harder. Even with the grace, he work harder. I am asking, O oh God, that the spirit of hard work will come upon these ones now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all the stars. You have been giving excuses why you are not writing papers, why you are not making progress in your adventure. I am asking this morning that the grace that we make the load to be lighter, the grace that we make the journey to be smoother, come upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.